Hello everyone, welcome to eShikshana. Uh, today we will be continuing uh, module 4 of uh, water supply and sanitation subject. So, till now we have covered uh, most of the soil appliances uh, uh, products. So, left out is urinals and cisterns in the soil appliances products and further we, we can continue towards waste appliances, bath and water fixtures and wellness products. I will start discussing about urinals. We all know what is urinals. Urinals are soil appliances. They come under the category of soil appliances and they are connected to a soil pipe. So, we discussed in the earlier in our earlier classes that there will be two pipes which is connected for all the fittings used in bathrooms and toilets. So, uh, in sanitation two pipes which are connected to these things are waste pipe and soil pipe. Waste pipe is where the water could be reused uh, after the treatment. In the soil pipe, it, soil pipe uh, the waste which is taken out can also be treated, but then it has it is more harmful than water which is produced from waste pipe. So, urinals are directly connected to soil pipe. Urinals are directly connected to soil pipe. Why? Because it is the it is the human excrete, human waste which is been, which is, uh, which is put into that. So, that waste is transferred to soil pipe. So, that is segregated. Since it is harmful, it is segregated. So, urinals are soil appliances and connected to soil pipe after a suitable trap. There will be a trap. After that, it is connected to soil pipe. Urinals shall be of uh, one of the following types. It could be bowl type. In the bowl type, there are two types. One is flat pack and another one is angle pack. So, bowl type urinal, the basic name came because of the shape of the bowl uh, urinal shape. So, the urinal shape is bowl. It is a one piece construction with integral flushing box rim. It has a flushing box rim also where it would have holes. It would have 20, 12 minimum holes and once you flush it, the water juts out from those holes. Not less than two fixing holes on each side of minimum diameter of 6.5 mm. Fixing hole size, the urinal fixing holes, the urinal piece will be there, no? that product has to be fixed either sides. So, the hole made for that fixation is 6.5 mm. When installed there shall, no be, shall be no liquid after left over in the bottom of the pan of the urinal after flushing. It is fixed that there is no water left over in the bottom of the pan. So, you see this, this is the bowl type. So, you see flushing happens at the bottom. So, uh, in the bowl type this is flat back, the back is flat. So, the size of this is 430 mm, the depth is 430 mm and uh, this is uh, 350 mm and the smaller size it could be 260 mm, minimum of 260 mm. That is less than half a meter, uh, sorry, uh, less than 500 mm. The whole size is less than 500 mm. So, this is fixed onto the wall. The next one is angle back type. In the angle back type, you see the back in 45 degree angles. Here you see it is flushed or it is no angle at the back, but here it has an angle back type. So, the dimensions for this is 340 mm by 410 by 265. 265 is the height of the urinal. Then there are different types of urinals again. Half stall urinal. These are one piece construction with or without integral flushing box rim. It can have integral flushing box rim. That means on the rim, rim of the uh, urinal, it could have a flushing system or without flushing system also it could be there. So, if you have flushing system, holes will be there and the water will be jetting through that. This half stall urinal can be with 
both it can be or with can, cannot be also those without such rim shall have ridges insides of the interior bowl to divert water towards front lip so if it doesn't have a flushing system water has to be poured on top of that or any other way of uh, flushing has to be found for that so for that the rim could have a extra support so that the water could not leak shouldn't leak from the urinal so this also has this this also can be made of glazed vitreous ware the size of this is 580 by 380 by 350 mm minimum or 450 by 350 by 300 minimum 450 is could be the length 350 width and the depth is 300 so similar way in the angle back it could be 580 by 400 by 500 or 450 by 375 by 350 minimum so this is squatting plate type urinal that means uh, the position of fusing that could be squatting so that's why it is called a squatting plate type urinal this is also one piece construction generally it is used for uh, women uh, it is having an integral integral longitudinal flushing pipe of suitable type which may be connected to the flush pipe the integral flushing type shall be connected to the sump by 313 mm dia holes if you see these three holes they are 13 mm dia holes and which is connected directly to the bottom trap urinals are designed to accept and dispose of liquid human waste only the types of urinal are ceramic slab stall type hand bowl type the slab type is steeper than the stall type but it does not provide the same degree of privacy the installation of ceramic bowl type urinal which have less falling area than the slab and stall urinals so you see different types of uh, urinals here slab urinal stall urinal and bowl urinal earlier which i was talking about bowl urinal flat back so this is uh, flat back bowl urinal and these are stall urinals stall urinals are nothing but they are uh, similar and the connection will be in the same thing slab urinal it has one wide opening we also have waterless urinals waterless urinals is a urinal that does not require flushing that means flushing the process of flushing is not much required in this so the wastage of water is not there so in waterless urinals urine passes through a one way wall into a trap which has a liquid less dense than urine having a liquid which is less dense than urine means that urine falls through the liquid and is likely to cause an odor less and is less likely to cause an odor when urine passes down the bowl it goes through a strainer there's a strainer here at the bottom so it goes through that sealing liquid and enters the waste pipe that would be connected to the waste pipe so these sealing liquids are typically oil based and as urine is denser than oil the urine falls through the sealing liquid helping to protect against the occurrence of odors so what waterless urinal urinals does is it reduces the odors so using a waterless urinal how much it can save up the water is it is around 2 lakh of 2 lakh liters of water per year it could save comparison come in comparison with the regular urinal it you can clean a waterless urinal with a cleaning and polishing fluid the cleaning mechanism is also different for this it has to be cleaning and polishing fluid itself all you need to do is spray that and uh, uh, and scrub it with a brush afterwards that is it so a waterless urinal cartridge the strainer which has this cost cartridge that can last anywhere from 4 weeks to a year as it depends on the number of times they are used per day urinals used roughly 200 to 300 times a day will require replacement cartridges more often if there is a public utility where more number of people are using the urine then it has to be often 
removed and replaced the cartridge. Every 4 to 8 weeks it, it could be replaced. It is important that these cartridges are replaced as often as required as failure to do so can lead the odor problems. Only when it causes problem is if the cartridges are not, not changed appropriately in time. So, we will move on to the waste appliances that is uh, wash basin. So, these waste appliances, the so called name has come because these uh, uh, appliances are connected to the wastewater pipe. So, a wash hand basin, wash basin is generally commonly used in all of the or all of the houses and all of the all over the place. So, it is it can also be called as wash hand basin, sometimes referred to as wash basin. It can also be called as wash basin, hand basin, wash bowl, basin, just a basin, wash bowl. It can also be called all of these, which is typically bowl shaped and can hold water. The basic idea of it, it has to be bowl shaped and it should hold water for washing hands, face washing, brushing teeth hand washing etc right so it is generally supplied with water but by hot and cold tubs this can have both hot hot water tubs and cold water tubs or even mixers depending on the requirement and has a drain to the lowest point it has a drain towards the lowest point and may have an overflow part way up the bowl wash hand basins are a form of sanitary ware that would traditionally have been manufactured from porcelain earlier even though porcelain now also it is very common the material used to make this wash hand basin or wash basin uh, porcelain is a ceramic material made from clay that might be described as vitreous china you uh, we would have heard about vitreous china also Vitreous china is nothing but porcelain. So, it is a ceramic material made from clay that might be described as vitreous china when coated with enamel. When it is coated with enamel, that is when it is called as vitreous china. If not, it is just a ceramic uh, material made from clay. The whole appliances is made from clay, but when, it, when the appliance is coated with different colored enamels, it could be white, light blue, light pink, etc. Then it is called as vitreous china and is mostly it will be white. However, sanitary appliances are now made from a wide range of materials. It could be metals, acrylic, glass. Now as the demand goes on based on the aesthetics or interiors of the design, material could be chosen on different varieties. Nowadays, we also see glass bowls, wash basins used for aesthetical purpose, right. So, there are different types of wash basins. One is countertop wash basin. Countertop wash basin is nothing but we have this uh, bowl and we would have counters. Counters made. On top of that, the bowl would be placed. It is like a vessel placed on a bowl. So, it is on a vessel basin or sit on bowls or self rimming basins are a popular choice for modern or minimalistic bathroom designs. It is often installed on top of a worktop. This is what I called it as countertop. It could be on shelf or it could be on worktop and is coupled with a tall basin tape tap or wall mounted basin tap. So, we have one more type of uh, wash basin that is full pedestal wash basin. Full pedestal wash basin is nothing but you have a bowl here and you have a pedestal which is at the bottom and the pipe which is coming from bottom of this basin directly goes towards the ground. In this particular full wash basin, um, full pedestal wash basin what happens? The water which is collected here goes down to the soil pipe or waste pipe directly towards the floor. In the half pedestal wash basins what happens? The water which is collected 
can be diverted to the wall and taken down to the through the soil pipe. So here this pedestal is the wash basin stand. We are wash basins with pedestals can be available as a single item or a detachable basin and pedestal. Either this whole thing could be single or we could get a pedestal as separate and wash basin, uh, detachable basin. So what we could do is we can take the pedestal and fix it on the floor and the uh, wash basin could be placed on the pedestal and fix the tap. Half pedestal wash basin, this is one more type of pedestal wash basin but it is half. So you see in this picture there is no complete wash basin, uh, there is no complete pedestal, it is only half, right. So half pedestal basins are another popular style of basin that is attached to the wall with a pedestal to conceal the plumbing. So what happens? The pedestal is usually, if you see whether it is full pedestal, if whether it is full pedestal or if it is half pedestal, it is mostly to conceal the plumbing. Conceal the plumbing means to make the, make it look better. So the pipes and all will be hidden behind this pedestals, right. So these basins like a wall hung toilet provide a sense of more space and are ideal for compact bathrooms. For small bathrooms, these are ideal. Types of wash basin. In this, these basins save space. They also save space by removing traditional pedestal design and providing extra floor space beneath, letting you use this underside for storage. So what happens if you are using this half pedestal, we could use the below space for any other storage etc. Also we can make a box out of this and make it as a storage. So it gives us more space for the storage. Small spaces, in the small spaces this is the most suitable one. Half pedestal wall hung ba wash basins are intended to provide the most efficient usability. Right. Then we have wall mounted wash basins. Wall mounted is nothing but as you see in the picture the wash basin is fixed to the wall and you also see below the trap which is there at the bottom of the sink or wash basin is going down and connecting to the wall. The pipe, wastewater pipe is behind the wall, uh, in the wall. So the uh, trap which is connected down, the collected water is travelled towards the wall. So you do not see any pedestal or anything, it is just a wall hung or wall mounted. So what happens, we mount the wash basin on the wall, then we can have you, uh, the look and feel of that will be very nice. This is also half pedestal but wall mounted. So the typology is based on the way it is fixed. Wall mounted basins are a fantastic way to save space. Definitely it is a very easy way and uh, maintenance is very easy. To clean the floor and all it will become very easy. And it does not look heavy in the bathrooms. So if we have a full pedestal or full uh, continuous pipe which is going down, whether covered with pedestal or not covered with pedestal or big size uh, uh, granite countertop or any other countertop you give, then it looks, it makes the space looks heavy. But this makes the space look less crowded. A chrome bottle trap, in this particular wall mounted wash basins, bottle traps are used or a ma ma bottle traps are nothing but which is coming down. In the earlier class we had discussed about bottle trap. So a chrome bottle trap or a matching white ceramic semi pedestal, this is a semi pedestal or a half pedestal are commonly included with wall mounted basins. As we uh, go on to the next one, uh, since in uh, places where we have, uh, we have to use wash basins, we have to install wash basins, there could be lack of spaces to provide book bigger or medium size wash basins. So the corner wash basin could be an ideal situation for those kind. 
if required. So, it is designed to fit in a rectangle, right angle. The wall has to be in a right angle. So, uh, it will go and sit into that rectangular corner and it saves a lot of space because only the corner is been used. They are perfect for cloak rooms and tiny bathrooms. Even sometimes we see that there is a, a small wall, you need a hand wash, suddenly you can opt for this. So, to save the space and also easily accessible, room corner will be utilized. Then we saw tabletop or uh, uh, countertop wash basin. This is under mount wash basin. Under mount wash basin is nothing but we have a granite slab, we make a hole into that uh, slab. It could be granite or any other material slab counter. Make a hole on that, in that and insert the wash basin towards bottom, towards it. So, the surface, the surface of the counter and the rim of the basin will be at the same level, right. So, uh, these, sink, these basins are called as undermount wash basin. Though it is very difficult to install them, it has to be done appropriately, done well. Then we have wall hung basins. Wall mounted also is quite similar, wall height is also called as wall hung basins also. What we discussed in the earlier two slides, wall mounted basin and wall hung basins are quite similar, only the name uh, could be uh, mentioned in different ways. But the, what these characteristic, what is the characteristics of this is, it is, it gives you a spacious look and it looks very minimal, minimal usage of space would be there. So, these are the standard dimensions of uh, wash basins based on the shape, based on the size, this is, these are the standards. So, the minimum space required to install a wash basin leaving either space here and here towards the edges is 900 mm. That is 3 feet is what we leave to install a wash basin leaving spaces on either side. So, the width of this could be um, 800 to 900 or and this, the width of this could be 400 to, depth of this could be 400 to 600. The depth it could be 400 to 600. That is 2 feet or even 1 and, a, 1 and a half feet. So, this is the minimum dimension which is required based on the size like medium, small, bigger, you can choose the requirement. These are the standards which we have to follow while installing wash basins in the bathrooms or anywhere. It could be anywhere. So, this is a ground level. From the ground level, your bottle trap bottom centroid should be at 450 level, 450 mm level. That is one and a half feet level. From the ground, the bottle trap should be above 450, right? The whole sink the whole wash basin top surface should be around 800 mm, 790 to 800 mm from the finished floor level. This you could consider as finished floor level. Finished floor level is FFL. That means it is after the uh, floor roofing is done, uh, if it is first floor or second floor or ground floor. After the concrete surfacing is done, after that the tiles also has to be added. After that is what you call it as for finished floor level. After the after adding tiles, it becomes finished. Floor level is finished. So from the finished floor level, it has to ha it has to have a height of 800 mm from the finished floor level. So the top surface of the wa wash basin should be 800 mm. The towel rail and other accessories which you provide, you could see the whole sketch here. This is the elevation and this is the section. So, you see the mirror just right above the wash basin and the light. And towel rail height should be minimum 1.1 meter so that it is handy for people to carry. It could be circular or straight rail. So, it has to have if it is circular, the top of a circular ring should be 1.1 meter. 
similarly the mirror top the top of the mirror should be 1.7 meter or 1.75 meters so that's the standard which is uh, usually for indian height right so that is about wash, wash basins then we can look into sink sink generally wash basin and sink both of them have basins but wash basins is mostly used for hand wash face wash and other things sinks we use it mostly in the kitchens so a basin sink is also also has a basin which is used for washing particularly a permanently installed sink fitted with a water supply and drain for washing the hands and face it it can also be used for washing face and hands but generally sinks where we use it is mostly in the kitchen area or utility area so a wash basin is a large bowl for washing your hands and face it is usually fixed to a wall with taps for hot and cold water we can have the provision of both hot water and cold water as well so uh, here i am showing you the plan and the elevation of the sink this is of steel sink made up of steel sink which has a bowl and the drain board so the uh, minimum dimensions of this is the depth should be 50 cm the width should be 70 cm minimum and uh, the bowl size should be 40 cm so the depth of the bowl the uh, depth of the bowl should be 15 cm now while you are fixing it from the finished floor level uh, if you see this human is using this uh, uh, wash basin the height the height of the wash basin is 90 centimeter that is three, 3 feet from the ground level after the skirting you could use below the wash basin you could use it for storage of uh, uh, dust bins or um, since the pipe and all goes under this you could use it for uh, storage of dust bins and other things right So based on the type of the bowl, we, can, we are classifying this as single bowl sink and double bowl sink. Based on the utilization, say uh, somebody needs bigger single bowl, so it can be used like this, you have a single bowl. This is uh, sink into the granite top, that means the top, not just the, I am sorry for telling granite top, but the counter top. So the counter top is cut for the required shape and the sink is inserted into that right so the tap is provided towards the end of it so this is single bowl we see two bowls here that is double bowl in the double bowl what happens the tap is at the center and you could rotate it towards this bowl or this bowl any bowl you could be it could be rotated so the most important thing is tap has to be rotatable if we are fixing the tap at the center or it, there could be a provision where we have two taps provided for each bowl. It is based on completely based on your on the design and the requirement. Then we have kitchen sink with drain board. Kitchen sink with drain board. This is what we are seeing is completely made up of steel. So uh, if we require other material, it has to be designed. That means it might not be single or it has to be made. It could be available or it could not be. So uh, based on the type of installation, uh, we have top mount and under mount sink. Top mount uh, sink is nothing but the rim of the sink is little bit higher than the counter top. Under mount sink is nothing but if you see here, the rim of the sink is below the countertop. The rim of the sink is below the countertop. That is under mount. Integrated kitchen sink. So if you see here, we do not see any differentiation. It looks like the same material is become a sink, two sinks and become a countertop. So it is integrated with, with the kitchen material. So that is integrated sink. 
So, here this is what I was telling about. Uh, this is two balls which you can see here in the picture and uh, same material or similar material is used and try to fix. Then in the waste appliances we have uh, dishwasher and washing machine. A washing machine is again a waste appliances. So, this is very very common in most of the houses and uh, most of the places. So, the standard dimensions you can we can have top loaded and front loaded washing machine. So, the standard dimensions which is required while you are designing is for the wash basin um, minimum at least 550 mm could be the size uh, uh, depth of the wash basin and width could be 850 mm and height could be 850 mm as well. So, this could be installed in the space where you have provided this much allocated space for wash basin. So, while using wash basin it has to have this is front load the loading will be done in the front front of the wash basin. So, this is front load machine top load machine also we have that is the loading of clothes will be done from the top. So, here uh, what we should uh, remember is that uh, it has to be connected with the two types of uh, pipes that is water inlet and water outlet. Waste water has to go out and waste water uh, good water has to come inside the uh, washing machine. Then we have dishwasher. So, the dishwasher is very very common in European countries and other western countries whereas, in India for Indian context because of the way the cooking happens to in Indian context it is quite uh, used in less number because uh, if we see this is the image of uh, dishwasher. So, what happens is uh, the door is opened like this if we see the plan of that uh, dishwasher the door is opened like that and then you have a trace to insert all the vessels and plates and spoons and other things which is been used and it has to be closed back. So, after closing back the tap is open and it has to be it has to be automatically uh, cleaning itself. So, the, uh, the soap and uh, water has to be let in. So, this is the me mechanism how uh, dishwasher works. Uh, so, the door will open towards bottom or towards side Det detergent dispenser will be there. Uh, like how we have in washing machine and uh, there are door gaskets, access panel, power supply could be there, will be there, water inlet one is drain pipe and one other is water inlet pipe is there and uh, there is upper spray pipe usually there is this upper spray pipe. So, it keeps spraying the water to the utensils and the utensils gets clean. So, one, dis one uh, drawback is the utensils has to be uh, uh, soap has to be applied before itself in some of the dishwashers. Though we have detergent dispenser here, sometimes it is required. So, we could see the standard dishwasher dimensions 35 inches high, 24 inches deep, 24 inches wide. Uh, so, it could be the track the racks would be something similar to this you could keep different utensils and cups and plates and all like in this and close it. So, that is about waste water system uh, water appliances. Now, we look into hot water system this is also part of plumbing. So, we look into hot water systems we have already discussed about solar panels and uh, other hot water systems in the planning, how a central hot water system could be integrated in the designing. These are appliances, external appliances where we could use it for hot waters, for getting hot waters in the building or for the requirement. So, for bathing, uh, for bathing, we, uh, it is uh, 15 liters per person is what we use, 15 liters per person is what we use if it is a bucket, one bucket of 
uh, water is 15 liters where we use it, right. So, however, how this is the calculation of how to decide the how many liters geysers has to be purchased. So, however, we will have you will have to add 15 liters per bucket if more buckets of water are used. For bathing with shower, the required quantity of water is 25 liters. If we have shower, uh, the quantity of water is 25 liters we use more than the bucket water we use in the shower. So, for extended shower bath or tub bath, if we have a bathing tub, then 35 liters per person is what we used 15, 25 showers and uh, bathtub or shower bath is 35 liters minimum like an average. So, for washing clothes 10 liters say for washing clothes if you want hot water 10 liters person 10 liters for a day for per person clothes and for washing utensils 5 liters minimum what you could keep it for each meal. So, in other words the total hot water needed per day for the household will amount to 100 liters. If there are 4 people in the house, if there are 4 people in the house 100 liters of water is required, hot water is required, right. So, um, continue adding the water per use according to the above guidelines to get the water requirement of your household. So, based on that you decide what kind of geysers are and what is what could what should be the capacity of the geyser which you have to buy. Nowadays there are in instant geysers where you do not have a tank within the geyser. If you need a tank within the geyser the water calculation has to be done. So, here just showing you the standard dimensions of uh, geysers. This one the width of uh, geyser could be 385 to 400. The depth of geyser should could be 400 to 700. This could be 400 mm or 700 mm that is more than 2 feet also. And uh, the width the total depth of uh, uh, geyser could be 385 mm and D. D is nothing but the below connection uh, uh, behind connection that could be 200 mm. So, the geyser will have usual geysers will have thermometer on and off buttons power indicator light it will have hot water outlet heating indicator light how much it is heating and then uh, you will have cold water inlet adjusting knob temperature adjusting knob. Inside the geyser it will have heating element, anode, thermal insulation for the tank and inner tank. A water heater does exactly what its name implies, it heats the water. So, you use this water to shower, wash your hands, cook and clean etc. It takes cold water from a water supply pipe and warms it up. It then pumps it through your home when you open a tap or start your clothes washer. There are two types of water heaters, one is tanked heater, another one is tankless water heater. So, a water heater with a, with a tank takes cold incoming water and indirectly warms it by a gas burner or electrical heating rods inside the tank. So, gas also could be used to heat the water or electrical heating rods also could be used to heat the water. But in the electrical heating nodes, you have to take a supply of electricity. So, once the water has reached the uh, proper temperature, the water heater stores it in the water tank, in the tank, uh, then you can open it up for your shower. Depending on how much you turn your hot water handle, the water heater will send hot water. So, that is about how you can use your hot water. And uh, as you turn on the water and set the desired temperature, a tankless water heater will heat the water going into your shower or sink as long as you have the water running. Then we have boilers. If we have more number of people, these are uh, one uh, uh, system where we can use heat the 
uh, more quantity of water together. So, a boiler not only heats water for use in appliances and showers throughout your home, but uses hot water to warm up your home whenever you turn on the heat during cold months. Boilers are mostly used at uh, external uh, in western countries. So, uh, this is just a schematical sketch what we have for boiler. It will have hot steam, it will have cool water it will have exhaust, it will have gas burner, right. So, cool water, cool, cool water enter here after the steam gives off all the heat to the home. Exhaust, the exhaust from the gas burner goes out to this way. Hot steam, the steam moves the heat through the home and then cools coming back to the boiler. Gas burner starts to warm up the water and turns it into steam. A boiler does not necessarily just boil the water, but it does turn water into steam. Steam is an inexpensive and efficient way to transport heat. Not only it is easy to pump through a home, water weighs more, uh, more and requires more effort to push throughout a home. It holds heat better than just air. A boiler heats up water turns into turns it into steam and pushes it throughout the home for heating purposes. The water is not necessarily portable, but can be used to heat pipes within the home's walls or heat a radiant, he, uh, heat a radiant heat system. A boiler turns water into steam to heat a home. Then we have heat pump that is about boiler. Uh, we also have hot water uh, boilers uh, uh, which is like a container where water is stored in that and it could be manually if your fire, fire could be uh, fire could help uh, heating the water. So, we have one more uh, hot water system that is heat pump. Most, most of them have heat pumps which use them to heat and cool their homes, but, uh, but a heat pump also can be used to heat water, either a standalone water heating system or as combination water heating and space conditioning system. So, heat pump is something similar to this sketch. So, we have fan on top of it, compressor, evaporator surround it and a hot water outlet which comes towards this temperature pressure relief wall and it has an anode in the center, condenser and insulation around the body. Then uh, it has cold water inlet at the bottom, extra water to drain. So, there is a drain to drain off the water, resistant elements are there and lower thermostat, right. So, heat, wa heat pump water heaters use electricity to move heat from one place to another instead of generating heat directly. Therefore, they can be two or three times more energy efficient than conventional electrical resistant water heaters. To move the heat, heat pumps work like a refrigerator in reverse. While refrigerators pulls heat from inside a box and sends it, send it, sends it into the surrounding room. A standalone air source heat pump water heater pulls heat from the surrounding air and transfers it at a higher temperature to heat water in a storage tank. Air passing over the evaporator can be exhausted to the room or outdoors. So, that is about hot water systems. Then we have wellness products, sauna bath. In wellness products, we are discussing mostly three items. So, one is sauna bath, steam bath. So, uh, sauna bath is nothing but a finish steam bath, Finland, Finnish is nothing but Finland. Sauna means it is a Finnish steam bath. Uh, the steam bath which was taken in, uh, which, which the way how it was taken in Finland. So, similarly it has been adapted in other parts of the world. So, that is sauna. Sauna means a Finnish steam bath in which the steam is provided by water thrown on hot stones. There used to be hot stones there and a water, hot water used to be, uh, a water used to be uh, thrown on the hot stones and the steam was generated because of the stones were hot and the water was thrown, thrown on that. So, that steam was used like a bath. 
So, this was the method what fin uh, Finnish people used to do, use it for their particular requirement. So, that is called as sauna nowadays. It is also called as sauna or sudatri. Sudatri also it can be called is a small room, is a small room or building designed as a place to experience dry or wet heat sessions. It could be dry or wet heat sessions or an establishment with one or more of the facilities. The steam and high heat makes the bathers perspire because the steam is there, the people who are taking bath they get perspiration and a thermometer in a sauna is typically used to measure temperature. Usually they also used to have the thermometer so that it could be controlled and a hygrometer also is there to measure the humidity or steam. This is the routine how a finished steam bath was happening. Now facilities offering sauna bathing often claim health benefits. Sauna bath is uh, very helpful for having a good health. So what does it do? It, detox, it does detoxification in the body, it increases metabolism, weight loss happens. It increases blood circulation, body pains or joint pains would be reduced, anti-aging, it also helps in anti-aging, skin rejuvenation, it helps in skin rejuvenation, it improves cardiovascular function, it improves immune function, it improves sleep, stress management and it also finally relaxes the body and mind. So it has so many advantages on the human being that is why it is called as wellness product. Typical sauna bath, sauna bath is nothing but a room which is crowded with wood or uh, made up of wood with respect to finish concept. So this is something how it was, uh, it looks when uh, sauna bath is done. Now steam bath, sauna bath is uh, finish uh, concept, steam bath. Steam bath, another, pro another uh, wellness product is steam bath. Steam bath is a steam filled room for the purpose of relaxation and cleansing. There is a very minor change in, uh, minor difference between uh, sauna bath and steam bath. A steam room is a heated room that people use for relaxation and to relieve some medical conditions. The steam bath is mostly for some medical, useful for mostly medical conditions. Doctors and uh, Ayurvedic doctors also advise these uh, steam bath for particular conditions, health conditions. They are often found in gyms and spas as well. Even in gyms and spa you find these uh, steam bath. A steam room is created when a water filled generator pumps steam into an enclosed space. So there is moisture in the air when people are sitting in it. The temperature inside a steam room is generally in the steam room, the temperature is should be 110 degree Fahrenheit and 114 degree Fahrenheit to 114 degree Fahrenheit. Humidity level should be 100 percent. So this also offers similar benefits, it improves circulation, skin health is improved, workout recovery, it loosens stiff joints, it reduces stress, stress. it opens up sinuses because the humidity is also like 100 percent and burns calories. Steam rooms and saunas are similar as both are heated rooms used for relaxation. The key, the key difference is that while steam rooms are filled with moist heat and sauna provides dry heat from a wood or electric stove. The only difference is moist heat and dry heat. Sauna provides dry heat, steam, room pro, uh, steam rooms are filled with moist heat. Sauna is filled with dry heat. A sauna is wood paneled and the stove heats rocks that in turn radiate heat into the enclosed room.
there will sometimes be a small amount of steam in the room if the user puts water onto the hot rocks. The temperature in a sauna is usually 160 degree Fahrenheit to 200 degree Fahrenheit and uh, the humidity is 5% to 30% whereas in steam it is 100% humidity and 110 degree Fahrenheit temperature but here the temperature is higher that is 160 Fahrenheit to 200 degree Fahrenheit and the humidity is very very low it could be like 5% to 30%. So it is a it, it provides a dry heat and steam steam bath provides a wet heat. So the space just looks like this it is just a slab for sitting and standing water and then there is a steam produced in the space or a room. And then we have jacuzzi. Jacuzzi is an uh, equipment or an appliance which also provides wellness for the human body. So if you see this, these are kind of a bathtubs, right? So these bathtubs, we see that there are holes, holes towards the bottom, holes towards the sides and the water could be filled like that. So what happens in this is nothing but it helps in massaging the body. So it is around the dimensions are very similar to the bathtub bathing tubs but the since it has a jet sprays it helps in massaging function. Uh, the idea of this is it massages waterfall happens, hand shower, faucet will be there, air switch will be there, stainless steel frame will be there, drainer will be there, water free hose, stainless steel hand, handrail and pillow. So a, a person could lie down into this bathtub and uh, uh, this jet release, uh, this holes releases the water as a jet spray and it massages the body of a human being. A larger bath with a system of underwater jets of water to massage the body. A hot tub, it is also called as hot tub. So it is a large tub full of water used for the hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is the word which we can use when we are saying it is a jacuzzi or a hot bath tub. Nowadays even in houses this product is been used so that it helps in massaging the body. Some have powerful jets for massage purposes. Hot tubs are sometimes also known as spas or by the trade name jacuzzi. So we will wind up the session for now, we will continue in the next session, thank you.